So what does it actually look like if we take on the climate in a real way that's really up to the scale of the, of the crisis that we're facing? Well, I think one thing that it takes is we really need to rethink how we're doing agriculture and food. Right now, food is a major contributor to climate change because of the way that we use chemicals on our fields and, and, and long-distance transportation. These chemicals, many of them are, are serious climate change uh, producers in and of themselves. And then the whole way we produce meat in this country leads to a huge climate, cr climate problem. So that's, that's number one. The second thing we need to do is to stop subsidizing dirty fuel. Right now, the oil and gas and uh, coal companies are, are enjoying huge subsidies from the federal government. We should not be subsidizing and giving low rates to these companies. In fact, on the contrary, we need to be putting a price on carbon so that the market will give the right signals and the right kinds of energy that will actually clean up our atmosphere and take on this climate crisis will be the ones that will, will be um, deployed. We need to look at how we're doing towns and cities. Right now, our, our, many people have to commute long distances in vehicles that are polluting their environment and, and, of course, adding to climate change. We don't need to live that way. People love compact, pedestrian-friendly communities. Many of them go to those kinds of places on vacation because they're so charming. And, of course, Europe, Europeans live that way, and it's not a bad way to live. So we really need to look at how our towns and cities are structured and how we deal with the waste products that come out of those cities, how we can start using more closed-loops kinds of systems. And we need to reinvent energy. We need to switch to renewables. We need to build mass transit. Those are all things that we know how to do. These are off-the-shelf kinds of technologies that we know how to do, and now is the time to do it. We just recently ran an article in Yes Magazine about how the people of Boulder, Colorado, who wanted to get renewable energy as their electricity source. Their local utility was not interested in doing so, was interested in sticking with coal. So they took over the utility and turned it into a municipally run utility. So we can do that. We, the people, have all sorts of ways of getting the kinds of energy that we want. And finally, we need to block some of the really awful, dirty energy sources the people in Texas who are blocking the KXL pipeline, the southern portion of that that the Obama administration just approved. That's one example, and I, th I think those people are heroes. Some of them are, are doing nonviolent direct action and getting arrested, trying to block the, the, the uh, construction of that pipeline across, you know, across private property that was basically taken away from property owners through eminent domain. So that's, it's an interesting coalition of Tea Party property rights advocates and environmentalists. And things like the uh, Powder River coal, that, that coal will have to be transported through the Pacific Northwest on mammoth coal trains that will be spewing all sorts of coal dust and, and diesel into the environment so that it can be exported to China where it will be burned and contribute to climate change. So I think we need to be willing to take direct action to stop some of those really dangerous new kinds of infrastructure that put into place the, a commitment to dirty energy over the long term.